Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm your host Jen McKenzie, lymphedema physiotherapist and ESSA accredited exercise physiologist. In this episode we're going to be talking about how to prevent cellulitis after breast cancer. The reason I chose this topic is because I think this is a little bit of an under addressed point of education if you've gone through breast cancer and particularly if you've had lymph nodes removed or radiated. So if you enjoy this content and you would like to see more, then please subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment in the section below if you have any questions around how to prevent cellulitis after breast cancer. So first of all, I'd like to say thank you very much to my lovely patient Katrina who inspired this video. Katrina recently had a bout of cellulitis on her breast. And I'm going to talk a little bit later in this video about whether or not cellulitis can actually occur in the absence of skin breakdown. So stay put until the end of this video because the last part of this video is really quite important as a take home message. So first of all, let's talk about what is cellulitis because sometimes when I say to patients who've gone through breast cancer, have you heard of cellulitis? Sometimes they say no, and it's actually quite an important thing for people who have gone through breast cancer, who've had lymph nodes removed, or lymph nodes radiated, or even lymphatic vessels radiated, to be aware of the risk of cellulitis. So cellulitis is a broad skin infection, and it can spread over a large area of skin. The biggest problem with cellulitis, of course, being that because it's the skin that is infected and skin being our largest organ in our body, it can have potentially life-threatening circumstances. So it is something that is worthwhile being informed about. So cellulitis is a broad skin infection and it occurs when bacteria gets through the skin barrier. So let's talk about how cellulitis can present. There are a number of symptoms that people can experience when they've got cellulitis, but probably the most noticeable one is that it will appear as a rash that will be pink or red in color. And the rash often will have a distinct border to it. So one of the things that some people will do, and sometimes medical professionals will recommend that you do this, is to get a pen and draw a line along the border of the rash so that you can monitor as to whether the rash is spreading or not. Other symptoms include heat, swelling, painfulness to touch, or it might just feel painful in general, and you might feel generally unwell or have a fever starting or feel lethargic. So the next part of this video is going to go into the link between cellulitis risk and breast cancer. This is one of these funny little topics that sometimes not enough people who have gone through breast cancer are informed about. Certainly not from what I see coming through my clinic. If I asked an average patient to describe the link between cellulitis and breast cancer, I don't think many of them would be able to do that. Not unless I'd already had the conversation with them. So this is one of these topics where I think it's worth more than a one sentence piece of information. There are so many topics to cover when it comes to getting through a breast cancer experience that sometimes you're not quite sure which are the super, super important ones and which ones you can glide over and refer back to as needed. But if there's one topic that I feel every breast cancer patient should be made aware of, but specifically those who have had lymph nodes removed or lymphatic vessels and nodes radiated, it's this topic which is the risk of cellulitis. So as an overview, the lymphatic system is part of your immune system. So when you have lymph nodes removed or lymph nodes or lymphatic vessels radiated, you are actually compromising some of the immune system. Now specifically, you're compromising the immunity of the skin. And this is why I've done other videos talking about why skin care, moisturizing your skin is so important if you've had lymph nodes removed. So one of the side effects of radiation is that it can scar lymphatic nodes, but it can also scar lymphatic vessels. So think about the nodes like the train stations and think about lymphatic vessels as the train tracks. And the lymphatic vessels basically link up the communication between lymphatic nodes. So you might have a cluster of nodes here and a cluster of nodes here, but it's the small lymphatic vessels that connect those two groups of nodes. 
And one of the side effects of radiation, unfortunately, is that the radiation can scar lymph nodes and lymph vessels. Whereas if you're having surgery, they're only removing the nodes. They're not really removing a lot of surface area of vessels, which is why from a clinical perspective, I think um, I see more people who have been radiated at higher risk of lymphedema, but potentially also cellulitis because there's more influence by radiation on your lymphatic system compared to just surgery. So at the end of the day, what we're talking about here is with removal of lymph nodes or scarring of lymphatic vessels or both, your skin is at a higher risk of infection. Now I did an earlier video on why is skin care so important after breast cancer. And if you haven't seen that video yet, go and check it out because it dives deep into why moisturizing your skin is so important, but it also discusses how to help prevent cellulitis. The reason I wanted to do this video is because I really wanted to hone in on the term cellulitis because not a lot of people seem to be aware of the link between breast cancer and cellulitis, but also what cellulitis is and what you should do to prevent that. The other videos I've done have been focused more around lymphedema and prevention of lymphedema rather than really honing in on the cellulitis. So that's why I wanted to do this video, but go and have a look at my previous video because that goes into types of skin breakdown and also what to do if you have a cut. We are going to go into what to do in a second if you suspect cellulitis, but as far as caring for broken skin, open wounds, and any sort of skin penetration that you're concerned about, go and have a look at that previous video. Summary, if you have had breast cancer and you've had lymph nodes removed or lymphatic vessels scarred from surgery or radiation, you are at higher risk of skin infection, which means you are at higher risk of cellulitis. So that's the link between breast cancer treatment and risk of cellulitis, specifically because your lymphatic system is under the banner of your immune system. And if you have parts of the lymphatic system removed or scarred from treatment, then that is creating an environment which is putting you at high risk of infection. So what to do if you have cellulitis? One of the things I recommend to all of my patients who are at risk of cellulitis is that they have a chat with their GP prior to any possible skin infection occurring. This is because when you do have suspected cellulitis, a GP should be putting you on prophylactic antibiotics to stop a broad skin infection really getting away from you. So sometimes those sort of discussions are best to be had prior to anything occurring because then you can come up with a set plan that you're going to follow in the event that cellulitis was to occur. If the cellulitis is a little bit too far advanced, then it may be an admission to hospital because they may need to put you on an IV drip of antibiotics. Now, it can make you feel pretty rotten cellulitis, so this is why this video is so important to you guys because even though hearing some of this information may be quite off point and even frustrating because I'm sure a lot of you listening to this information are thinking, crikey, I've been through breast cancer, I've had either surgery, chemotherapy or radiation and now I've got to potentially deal with something like cellulitis. What I prefer though is to present the information so you guys are aware and educated rather than leaving people in the dark to find out everything in hindsight. So even though it's a tough topic to discuss with people because it's not a really nice thing to hear that you're at higher risk of something like cellulitis, I much prefer people to be aware and educated rather than finding it on the back burner. The last point I want to talk about in this video is whether or not cellulitis can occur in the absence of skin breakdown. So the typical sequelae of what happens when someone gets cellulitis is they might get a form of skin breakdown such as a cut, a scratch, a rose thorn stubbing their finger. So anything that's actually broken the layer of the skin. So when that occurs, there is a possibility that that area of skin breakdown becomes infected or bacteria gets through the layer of the skin into your system. And that's what triggers a bout of cellulitis. Now, sometimes I have had cases where patients have presented with cellulitis where there doesn't seem to be any apparent obvious skin breakdown. So there's two ways to look at this. It may be possible that cellulitis can start without 
any obvious skin breakdown, but it's also possible that the bacteria is getting through microscopic cracks in the skin. And this may occur in cases where the skin integrity has been compromised. And certainly in the case where someone's been radiated and they haven't been looking after the area of skin that's been previously radiated, the integrity of that skin barrier might be compromised. So again, this is why it's so, so important to use a moisturizer on any areas of your skin that have been affected directly by radiation, such as the breast or the chest wall, or even over the shoulder. But also, if you've had lymph nodes removed from your armpit, then it is the skin on the arm of the side that's had lymph nodes removed that is compromised from an immune perspective. So if you want to apply moisturizer, something like a Sorbeline, QV, Mugu would be ample on a daily basis. But this is what you want to be putting on chest, breast wall and or arm regularly to make sure the integrity of your skin is really really good to prevent any sort of microscopic skin breakdown occurring. So you don't have to use Sorbeline, it can be a low pH water-based moisturizer is ideal that you can use on a daily basis on the areas that I've just discussed. So the answer to the question can cellulitis occur in the absence of skin breakdown is yes or so it would seem. It may be that there is areas of skin breakdown that we either can't see or that we're just not aware of. As an example, sometimes people get really, really dry heels and cracks form on the heels of their feet. And this is potential for bacteria to get into your system. Now, another factor to think about here is that lymphatic fluid is the byproduct of cell metabolism. So lymphatic fluid is something that the body is continually trying to get rid of. It's a little bit like when you drive down the road and you have a car in front of you and a little bit of smoke comes out when the exhaust lets the smoke go. So lymphatic fluid is the byproduct of cell metabolism. So lymphatic fluid is actually carrying dead bacteria and waste products that the body's trying to get rid of. So if you've got areas of your body, such as your armpit or your breast or chest wall, or even over on the side of your chest wall that have scarred lymphatics, then there's the possibility that there's a little bit of lymphatic fluid that hangs around these areas. So the very nature of lymphatic fluid is almost a perfect environment for an infection to occur because it's a waste product that's not exactly being shifted quickly out of these areas. So with lymphatic fluid being a byproduct of cell metabolism, the body is actually trying to get rid of it. So initially lymphatic fluid is moved through the liver and the kidneys and eventually excreted via the bowel and bladder. So this is why maintaining skin integrity is so important after breast cancer, particularly if you've had radiation or if you've had lymph nodes removed. So the take home message of this video is that if you suspect you have any symptoms of cellulitis, then please get to your GP or contact your medical team urgently because if cellulitis is starting, they will want to start you on prophylactic antibiotics or even admit you to hospital so that that infection can get under control as quickly as possible. Please don't hesitate if you do think you've got any symptoms of cellulitis as it can be a life-threatening condition if left untreated. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you've gained some really good information on how to prevent cellulitis after breast cancer and the link between cellulitis risk and breast cancer. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the section below. I'll see you next week for another video. Thanks for watching and for commenting. I'm Jen McKenzie, the Breast Cancer Physio, and I'll see you next time.